Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, October 8th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. The H is silent in Benghazi, but according to the House Select Committee, thousands of incriminating emails are about to be released. And this could be the end of Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. What difference at this point does it make? Then, attackers will be shot on sight. In the wake of the tragic shooting in Oregon, Rand Paul says schools should be armed and not left defenseless. Plus, it was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancakes. Well, pancaking almost like a precision implosion. The science of 9-11, evidence of controlled demolition. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, Richard Gage, in studio with Leanne McAdoo. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Well, the race to replace House Speaker John Boehner has been postponed. Dun, dun, dun. That's right. Kevin McCarthy has taken himself out of the race unexpectedly, saying that he's not the right guy for the job and that the, Republican, uh, the Republicans need to find a new face. According to another GOP rep in the room at the time, McCarthy said that he reached a decision after he and his wife prayed on the matter. But a lot of people are uh, thinking that this is a little bit of a curious timing considering a, a letter that was sent out from North Carolina uh, Rep. Walter Jones urging any Republicans running for leadership positions to drop out of the race if they have committed any misdeeds in Congress. Uh, so he's basically saying, with all this voter, voter distrust, I'm asking that any candidate for Speaker of the House, Majority Leader, and Majority Whip withdraw himself from the leadership election if there are any misdeeds that might embarrass himself or the party come to light. So I'm not saying who it is, but if any one of you, and then all of a sudden McCarthy drops out and lo and behold, the Daily Caller has a story now, a story out that shortly after this announcement, an IP address from DHS edited McCarthy's Wikipedia page and referred to an alleged affair between uh, North Carolina rep Renee Elmers and Kevin McCarthy. Scandal. Now, John Boehner has indicated that he is going to remain in the speaker position until his replacement is chosen. David Knight is saying that the race is now between the devil and Daniel Webster. He's not only thoroughly in with the establishment agenda of both parties, leadership, but he is also willing to punish people just like Boehner was. And now he's thrown himself in as an alternative to Kevin McCarthy. So now it appears at this moment, unless somebody else uh, comes into the running, that the race is between Daniel Webster and Jason Chaffetz. Now, Jason Chaffetz says that the fact that he threw Mark Meadows off of the committee because he opposed fast-track trade and then reinstated him, he says that shows that he's someone who's learned from his experiences. No, not really. Because the House rules say that if the majority of the committee wants to go against uh, the, the leadership that threw him off the committee, they can reinstate the chair. And that was precisely what they were about to do with Mark Meadows. They were going to reinstate him. That would have been an embarrassment, a rebuke to Jason Chaffetz. So he did it himself so he wouldn't, have look, so he wouldn't look bad. This guy now wants to be speaker. He is going to be a John Boehner. Different face, 
same person. So it looks like the person who we've got two choices at the moment, unless they come up with somebody else. The two choices right now are Daniel Webster, a man who voted against the Trans-Pacific Partnership against fast track trade. And we have Jason Chaffetz, who would throw people off of committees if they didn't toe the line on fast track trade. That's the choice that you've got right now. I don't know much about Daniel Webster, but I do know that he stood up to John Boehner when nobody would stand with him. That's called leadership. That's called backbone. That's called character. We need to support people like that. Well, the Benghazi committee is saying that they are about to release a trove of damning Hillary emails. Now, they say that these are going to show that longtime Hillary Clinton friend Sidney Blumenthal pushed his business interests in Libya on the then Secretary of State and that she forwarded an email discussing a CIA source which was classified at the time it was sent. Benghazi chairman Trey Gowdy says that he plans to release 1,500 emails within the next five days. Now, coming up later in the show, I'm going to be speaking with our InfoWars DC correspondent, Wade Madsen. He's got a damning report of his own where he is actually saying that the evidence shows, I mean, it's bigger than just this email scandal. He's saying the evidence shows Clinton was running a parallel outsourced State Department that was answerable only to her. So that's bombshell. But let's look at the latest Clinton flip-flop. Now this one's a doozy because it deals with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, something very important. Hillary is now breaking with the president on yet another move to the left, announcing her opposition to the TPP. In an interview with PBS NewsHour, she said, what I know about it as of today, I'm not in favor of what I've learned about it. She said it failed to meet the high bar of creating good jobs, raising wages, and advancing national security, which is exactly what we've been saying about it for about a year. So I don't know what she's just now learned about it, that all of a sudden she's opposed. Former Maryland Governor uh, Martin O'Malley said in a statement, wow, that's a reversal. I was against the TPP months and months ago. I didn't, uh, you know, Clinton can try and justify her own reversal of opinion on this, but I didn't have one opinion eight months ago and switch that opinion on the eve of the debates. Bingo. So what changed? So Clinton knows that the voters are going to be completely against this. It's gotten a really bad rap. Clinton was in favor of this during her time as Secretary of the State. She actually supported the measure 45 times. And now she's, of course, voicing her uh, opposition of this only after negotiations on the TPP have ended. You'll recall she kept saying no comment, no comment. She's a total fraud and she seems to forget that the internet is forever. We are very committed to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. Trans-Pacific Partnership. Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. We should aim for true regional integration. And that is the spirit behind the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. High quality Trans-Pacific Partnership. So just as Hillary is changing her story on the TPP, the Obama administration has been continuously changing its story on the bombing of a hospital in Afghanistan last weekend. Now, first they said they had no idea if they'd hit the hospital or not. Then the, a military brief said that the strike occurred in the vicinity of the hospital. So it may, maybe it was hit by accident. Then they said that they were called in to assist Afghan troops in the area. And then Tuesday, they added that the U.S. forces had both called in and carried out the airstrike at the behest of Afghan forces, which from the very beginning, Doctors Without Borders has been saying, you knew, we told you, and for 30 minutes, you continued to bomb the hospital. So finally, the president did, made a rare move and issued an apology, calling directly to Doctors Without Borders to say, sorry for bombing your hospital. This morning from the Oval Office, President Obama spoke by telephone with Doctors Without Borders International President, Dr. Joanne Liu, to apologize and express his condolences for the MSF staff and patients who were killed and injured when a U.S. military airstrike mistakenly struck an MSF field hospital in Kunduz, Afghanistan over the weekend. Journalist Glenn Greenwald has slammed the president, saying you can't just apologize for war crimes. Now, in an interview, he said Doctors Without Borders has run this hospital for five years. They've made it very clear that they're not interested in hearing apologies or claims of mistake or collateral damage. They want only one thing, and that is an independent, impartial investigation to find out what really happened here, who made the decision to bomb this hospital, 
and what is it what it is that they knew. Now, unfortunately, the U.S. government has made it clear that they're going to be re refused to cooperate with that kind of investigation because they say they're investigating themselves. And we have heard that again and again with the Obama administration. They're going to look into it. We'll investigate ourselves. We've got our people looking into our own people. Now, G Greenwald also went on to slam the mainstream media, particularly CNN and the New York Times, for their shameful reporting on this airstrike and that they have gone out of their way over and over in every article to hide the fact that it's the U.S. that has done this. So I'm sure that those are those establishment outlets are going to be holding this administration accountable to get to the bottom of that self-investigation. Now, it's interesting because Obama is set to appear in Roseburg, Oregon uh, this week. We're going to have our reporters on the ground as well. We've already told you that they have rolled out the not welcome mat for him. So it seems he's kind of in the whirlwind of a PR nightmare there uh, with everything that's going on. But now Rand Paul has actually spoken out against this shooting, saying that schools should be armed and they should place signs warning potential attackers that they will be shot on site. So this is the same principle as fitting your home with a sticker saying that you have a burglar alarm or even if uh, burglars, would-be burglars, see that you have an alarm system installed, they're going to avoid your home altogether as well as homes in the vicinity if they even so much as see a sticker on the window. Research out of Rutgers University shows that doing things like this uh, reduces crime in entire neighborhoods. So this is exactly what Rand Paul is saying. Put these stickers on. Let people know that they will be shot. But no, we can't have signs. We can't do that. We can't protect our most precious commodities here in our life, our children. No, it's the liberal thing to do to just go ahead and be terrorized, kind of like this elementary school uh, in uh, California. They're saying that they're being terrorized by a third grader in so much the school has had to go on lockdown three times. This kid, he's acting unruly. They say he punched someone in the stomach, then he ran into the bathroom and locked the door, and then he threw the trash can at the bathroom door. And then he yells, if you make eye contact with him, he comes up and he yells at you and throws rocks at students and the teachers. And so what do they do? They just lock down the school and let him rage in the hallways. This is the liberal thing to do. Allow yourself to be terrorized. Allow your students to be terrorized. Don't fit the school with the stickers. Don't arm the teachers. That doesn't even make sense, does it, in, in this day and age? Well, let's go ahead and see what kind of a welcome mat's going to be rolled out for Obama when he hits Oregon. President Obama is not welcome in Roseburg, Oregon. The folks in Roseburg know what a true responsible gun owner legitimately endures and are well aware of the fact that almost 319 million red-blooded Americans born to the great constitutional catechism have been bound and gagged due to the gun-free killing zones proliferating across these United States of America. The LA Times reported an ex-girlfriend of a surviving victim scoffed at the idea of tightening gun laws, and Kendra Godin, an elementary education student who hid from the shooting in a nearby classroom, said she hoped her community's tragedy wouldn't get spun into the national debate about firearms. That's not the issue, she said. Cheyenne Fitzgerald had to undergo surgery to remove one of her kidneys after being lucky to escape the massacre alive. Speaking with the Daily Mail, her brother said that Cheyenne and her entire family are supporters of the Second Amendment and remain steadfast in opposition to gun control. We're pro-Second Amendment, pro-guns, said Jesse Fitzgerald, sporting a pro-Second Amendment shirt. We should have teachers trained in non-lethal ways to take people down. He noted when asked about solutions to schools being targeted by mentally troubled individuals. Pro-gun rights sheriff John Hanlon is catching heavy fire from desperate Brady campaign president Dan Gross. Gross is calling for Hanlon's dismissal after revelations surfaced that Hanlon posted 9-11 and Sandy Hook conspiracy videos. Hot Air reported, Dan Gross, president of the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence, said the overwhelming majority of Americans don't want a 